What's going on? Brandon Lewis here with your 10Con Big 7 update. And boy, do we have some news. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and introduce this appropriately <clears throat> because I think it deserves it. I think it deserves it. This is a big deal. And it, it's just fantastic, in my opinion, that finally Tennesseans, conservatives, and patriots are having their, their voices heard. So, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We have a special session. Okay, so that's my intro. Uh, I'm just going to read it to you. we got a lot to cover. Now, some of this is in the same vein. It's very important. It does not mean at all that our work is done. It doesn't mean our work is done. If you're watching this, please post in the comment section from whence you are watching. I like to always know what kind of coverage we have here. We often have people uh, watch from all over the state, but we, we also have people watch from out of state, which I think is kind of weird. But I'm glad everybody's here. I don't know that I would be keeping up with what's going on with conservative things in Idaho or Nebraska, but some people, some people do. Thank you all for being here, and do leave comments about these stories, no matter when you watch this, uh, and share it with people, because we've got some, some big news here. So the big news, the biggest piece of news that we've had for a long time, and we've been working on this, as you well know if you subscribe, is getting a special session to address uh, a lot of the losses of freedom that we've had over the last 18 months. Infringements on personal liberty, uh, commerce, um, education, medical, you name it. So here we go. I'm just going to read this specific statement. McNally and Sexton call for special session on medical freedom. Ford Corporate Welfare Plan sets stage. Here we go. This is their quote. The Ford Megasite deal is transformational for Tennessee, and we look forward to working with Governor Lee to finalize this project as part of this special session uh, call for Ford Motor Company. At the same time, we've heard from many Tennesseans seeking relief from burdensome COVID-19 mandates being imposed upon them. We are working together per our state constitution to call an additional special session upon the completion of the megasite session to address issues surrounding COVID. Now, specifically what? Corporate vaccine mandates, forced masking of kids in schools. I hope they pick up separation of powers. We, we need to quit ruling by executive order in the state of Tennessee. I mean, that is just Tennessee Civics 101. All right, we got Diane down here. They've changed the way this works. So I have, I have a hard time sometimes seeing the comments. I don't know why they put these things way down here. we got Diane uh, watching from Bobby, Tennessee. We've got uh, Margaret watching from Antioch. Great news. I agree, Margaret. Thank you for being here with us. Um, and so we've really got a lot of interesting things happening. And <clears throat> so I'm glad the Ford plant's coming here. I'm not, like, super-duper excited about electric vehicles. And I'm not super duper excited about, you know, partnering necessarily always with a South Korean company. It makes me nervous. Uh, I think that a lot of times these uh, pushes for alternative fuel are, are subsidized to the point that if they had to survive in the marketplace, in many cases they wouldn't. I especially do not care for corporate welfare. I really don't. I run a small business. The government never helps me out. They never say, I never, Bill Lee never picks up the phone and says, hey, I hear that you've employed a whole bunch of people for, you know, almost 15 years now. How about we send you some money or help you out? Small businesses in Tennessee don't get that. Uh, small businesses in Tennessee were the first ones to be shut down, and they were discriminated against terribly, and a lot of them went out of business. So I'm just never going to be a real big corporate welfare fan, even if it creates jobs. I, I don't think you should take uh, Tennessee's uh, taxpayer dollars and give it to private industry. I don't think that's how government should work. But the beauty in this situation is that the Ford uh, issue calls the governor to call a special session for that. Now, he would not call a special session to protect your, your liberties. And, for example, I got a call the other day from a lady who works someplace who's six months pregnant, and, and she's going to have to lose her job or get vaccinated, and she's worried. I mean, it's right, rightly so. And she's already had COVID in addition to it, so she's got natural immunity. You never know what can make a, a pregnancy go wrong. 
okay? We had two nat natural childbirths at our home, and uh, my wife is very diligent about her personal health. And for, for women like that to be put in that situation, for men, for kids to be put in those types of situations, for what we're about to discover, what a lot of these kids are going through in schools so are just baffle you right now. And some of you are going through it as parents. And that's why they're calling this special session. Reed Uberman, an indie thinker in the house. Great to see you here, Reed. You also check out Indie Thinker. It's a podcast. You'll love it. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to get on to the next story here. Uh, Knott's kids isolated, segregated for refusing masks. When I saw these pictures and I heard this, it made me a little hot. So here we go. And these are things that we reported on. If you really want to get them in detail, go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com. So reports are coming in that children in Knott's County schools are choosing not to wear masks or being placed in holding areas. That's real nice. That's a good look. Isolated from other children. Bet that really helps their mental development, makes them feel really connected with their school, makes them really want to trust their teachers. Photos shared on social media show children in isolation room at West Valley Middle School, uh, Knoxville, holding up signs to the windows in protest. What are we doing to our kids for the love of Pete? Parents have sent us reports about Knox County teachers yelling and screaming at kids who showed up to school without masks. Other parents are making the choice to pull their kids out of school and homeschool and acknowledge that virtual school is either not an option or a poor excuse for in-person learning, which it is. It's a very poor excuse for in-person learning. You know, we've, we've gone from only a third of the kids in, in Tennessee being able to read, and now we're down to a quarter at grade level, approaching grade level, which I'm sure it, it's worse than how they report it. And so it, it's terrible that this stuff is going on. With the absence of comment from Knox County Schools, we have submitted an open records request and we'll keep you informed of our findings. So I copied the appropriate people. We've done an open records request to figure out how they decided it was a good idea to treat these kids in this fashion, and we'll tell you what we found out. Next story related to this, happening in a different way, Tennessee kids in school isolation not receiving proper education. Imagine that. Uh, it's because the school gets paid by the government, COVID relief funds if they enforce the mask mandate so our kids are for sale. I don't know about that, but I would say that our kids are definitely for sale. Uh, public government education has had our kids for sale for a long time. And, um, and they are doing a poor job of it. They, they take $11,000 a year for 13, kids, 13 years, and they send these kids out on the street functionally illiterate, can't do basic math, no employable skills. We need school choice in Tennessee. Back to the story. Following our story on Knox County Schools being isolated and segregated from other students for refusing mass, parents have reached out to stories from their schools. One such parent in a Farragut Intermediate uh, School student shared the isolation conditions their children were experiencing. Listen to this. The parent states that the conditions continue to expose how teachers are biased and not willing to work with children or parents. Uh, the parent said the choices these children and families make should not negatively impact their kids' opportunity to learn just because they believe differently than someone else on a specific issue that's out of their control. Uh, follow the money trail, Jason says. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, back to this. The parent outlined several points that need to be addressed and will be brought up in the next school board meeting, including, now this is a good one, Students in this situation should be receiving education following the same curriculum as those who wear a mask. So they were 30 minutes of work in the beginning of the day does not constitute school. No instruction provided by a teacher is unacceptable. So these kids are just put in a gym and just told to sit there. Why would you waste a kid's time for an entire day as an educator and think that that's okay? Because they, they chose to exercise some kind of medical freedom. This is why we need school choice. The teachers are clearly treating those who are wearing masks differently. They sit quietly, isolated, penalizing them for talking and moving them to other tables, monitoring them on bathroom and water breaks as, the, as if they are in trouble, not allowing them to participate in recess with their peers, even though they, the complying students, do not wear masks when at recess. A lot of this stuff doesn't make any sense. It's not making sense. And these kids are being punished. And I can't, I can't believe that it took our Republican supermajority this long to act. And it was only after hollering and screaming and, and constituents just blowing them up. And I'm telling you right now, this special session has been called, but there are all kinds of senators that are not on board with it. They are mad that they have to do the will of the people. And, and they consider people who want medical freedom 
uh, to be, uh, what was the word that one of them used? Uh, radicals. Radicals. Because you want your kid to have a good educational experience. And Reed says it's about control. It's absolutely about control. And uh, we've still got a fight on our hands, but we have move the ball forward and I want to uh, especially encourage all of you to contact Cameron Sexton and say thank you. Cameron Sexton has been in this fight to the degree that he can. Uh, he has been the strongest advocate that we have in Nashville for protecting our kids and our health uh, and having choices. He's not been like a um, He's not been a firebrand on it by any stretch of the imagination. I believe he could have been a lot more vocal, but at the same time, when you lead a rabble of, of people in a legislative assembly, you got all kinds of viewpoints. And about a third to maybe even 50% of the people that he leads in the House are rhinos. And it's hard to drag rhinos along. And, and McNally is, is not very conservative himself, and he's dragging... He's dragging his rhinos, kicking and screaming. And they think, they, they think condescendingly about their constituents. And I, we're running an article here before too long about some of the messages uh, that specific senators have been sending to their constituents about this. And it's, it's really heartbreaking and it's not appropriate. Uh, next story. 26 governors call on Biden to end the border crisis. More than half of all U.S. governors have called on Biden to end what they describe as a national security and public health crisis at the Tennessee border, or at the, it's at the Tennessee border too, at the southern border. The 26 governors also requested a meeting with the president at the White House to bring an end to the national security crisis created by eight months of unenforced borders. Quote, a crisis that began on our southern border now extends beyond to every state and requires immediate action before the situation worsens, they argue. The negative impacts of unenforced border policy and the American people can no longer be ignored. You know, we've got a study committee on illegal immigration right now. They call it refugee resettlement, but the scope has gotten a little bit wider. And uh, it just amazes me how little uh, we can get going. And I don't know why in the world they, they put folks on that committee like Todd Gardenhire who wants to give wants to give free tuition to illegal aliens, was completely upset with the fact that this illegal immigration center got shut down in Chattanooga, um, you know, because a hundred people were losing their job at the center. Never mind the three accounts of molestation and one kid being lost, and that's just what we know about what we've reported about. My assumption is always when a handful of people get arrested, if everything, if every story had been told, it'd probably be a lot worse over there. I don't know why they put people on in study committees that, that don't care about Tennessee's sovereignty or our nation's sovereignty. It's a very odd thing. Compared to the same time last year, border apprehensions have increased by nearly 500%, with August's numbers surpassing over 209,000 people entering the U.S. illegally. How do you count people that have entered the United States illegally? If they entered illegally, there's probably a whole lot more that didn't get counted, I would assume. To date this year, more than 1.3 million have entered the U.S. illegally, a number greater than the population of nine states. Whew. Among those among those being apprehended, 9,700 were found to have prior criminal convictions, including registered sex offenders who were previously convicted and served time in U.S. prisons. Many were released and deported only to re-enter the U.S. again illegally this year because Border Patrol agents do not have access to criminal records from other countries. Of course they don't. They rely on information reported in the National Crime Information Center database. These individuals were already in the database. So if you got 9,700 people, 10,000 people, that have criminal records in the United States that are coming across the border that have probably already been deported, imagine how many have criminal records in Mexico or Guatemala or Haiti or wherever they're coming from. This is a big mess. Guys, it takes a lot of time, money, and effort to do what I do here at the Tennessee Conservative. And if you go to tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support, you can help us in the fight, and boy, do we ever need it. And you get two proud Tennessee Conservative bumper stickers, and with this special session coming up, it's really important to have your hands on this handy-dandy contact list so that you can respectfully encourage your senators, and especially the ones that lean left that are Republicans, to do the right thing, even if they don't agree with it, because a lot of them don't. They think you should just be, just do what you, your government tells you, and shut up. You need to contact them, okay? 
and we've got your state senators and we've got your state reps on here and you can contact them and if you give fifty dollars or more or if you give a recurring contribution you will get this proud Tennessee conservative tumbler proud Tennessee conservative I know that all of you are and uh, this special elixir that is created in here you can put any kind of beverage you want to in here and it will actually turn liberals conservative if you can get them to drink the whole thing uh, it also has to be pure grain alcohol because you have to like you know tampen down enough of, of the uh, in, you have to reawaken the inactive brain cells in a liberal's mind and if you put it in this special magical container and if they drink from it uh, those are the things that happen they start talking like Thomas Sowell and Rush Limbaugh it really is quite amazing so if you'll give a donation of $50 or more or a recurring donation we'll send that puppy out to you and you'll get my sincere gratitude and undying thanks listen I've heard it said that conservatives give conservatively and liberals give liberally. And uh, I have not found that to be true, but we could still use a little more help. A lot of times people consume publications like this for free, uh, organizations that are really fighting very hard and bearing a financial and a time burden to do what conservatives want somebody to do but can't do or don't have the time to do. So your donation allows us to do what you can, and we step in for you. So go to tennesseeconservativenews.com slash support. We could really use your help. Back to the story. Right to Life Group responds to Planned Parenthood rally with prayer. On October 2nd, Planned Parenthood is slated to have a rally in downtown Chattanooga at Miller Park. When I hear this, I think this is probably what it was like when People got together in the woods back in the Middle Ages to worship Satan. That's what I think of. It's like a conclave of evil. And I, I, it just amazes me that people would rally around killing the unborn. And people will say, well, Planned Parenthood does this other stuff. No, they don't. They do a little. And it's just, the only reason they do any of it is just so that they can say we do other things. Their main mission in life is to provide abortions as early and often and as late as possible. I mean, if they could probably go after two and three year olds, they would. And they would consider it maternal health. I mean, you know, you got to deal with a kid all day long. It's terrible. So Right to Life organization is responding with calling members and residents to pray. Spokespersons from the Greater Chattanooga Life State, this is a call to pray for life against them bringing their deadly agenda to our beloved community. The organization asks those that are interested in praying RSVP and let them know uh, where they're playing from their own location uh, or will join them to pray as a group. I think it would be better if these folks actually showed up on site. That would be my suggestion, but at any rate, those interested in praying with the group will be provided with a specific location and prayer guide. The Greater Chattanooga Right to Life asks that this announcement be shared in church bulletins on social media and community boards with uh, families, friends, and neighbors. I, I, you know, what is it I saw the other day? I think we posted it. And it said, um, what was it it said? It said that uh, you can pray all you want, but eventually David had to pick up the rock and throw it at the giant. And I think it's true. I think we are called to pray. I pray a lot for our nation. I pray a lot for our leaders. I pray a lot for, for what's going on in our country, in our state. Uh, but I also do this. The physical spending of time and money to communicate with you about what's going on while the clown show distracts everybody up in Washington, D.C. We've got things going on right here in the state of Tennessee that we can actually make a difference on. You can watch a million hours of programming about what Joe Biden's doing in, in D.C. But when it comes right down to it, you can't do much about it. That's sad to say. You should give some money. You should stay a little bit informed. You should probably support some organizations financially, maybe spend some time doing something on the federal level. By all means, do it. But dollar for dollar, moment for moment, hour for hour, you will get more benefit from knowing what's going on at the state and local level than you ever will nationally. And you can call your senators, you can have a conversation with them, you can call your state reps, you can reach the governor, and, and you know, for every moment you spend working on state stuff, you can see fruit. For every more, more, a moment that you spend working on federal stuff, you might see a little, but probably not much. So go and uh, support uh, the Chattanooga Right to Life organization, and for questions, call 423-304-2547. Diane says, it's satanic murdering the babies. I agree. It's pretty, pretty basic. 
Federal judge, next story, rules against Lee's student mask order in Williamson County and Knox County's Slatery appeals. Thank goodness. Federal judge ruled in favor of parents in Williamson and Knox County schools, allowing their districts in Tennessee counties to enforce mandates in their school. Plaintiffs in both cases are parents of students with disabilities who argued Governor Bill Lee's executive order uh, allowing parents to opt out of mask mandates violated their students' rights to protection under the Americans with Disabilities Act because the order does not provide proper protection for their students who have chronic lung disease, a rare brain disorder, and a congenital heart defect, as was argued in the Knox County case. If you want to protect your kids, we have not seen any evidence that mask mandates do any different in the spread of COVID because people don't wear them properly, because people don't wear the proper masks. And kids in particular are careless in their interactions with each other, in their interactions with teachers, moment by moment. If you sat in a room with a bunch of kids wearing masks, and you had to click a clicker every time they wore it improperly or were goofing around or whatever, like you, your, thumb, your thumb would fall off. It doesn't work. And the other thing that is amazing to me, you know, if my daughter couldn't run, she was in a wheelchair or something, God forbid, I would not ask them to cancel track at the school because that's not fair to all the other kids. And we're living in a remarkable age of selfishness as it relates to the liberties of others. And I really hope that, um, that this stuff stops. I mean, then we also got these, all these, these abuses by these judges uh, ruling in cases that have nothing to do with the federal government. And this is a, an example of it. Back to the story. In Knox County, in a similar previous ruling, in Shelby County, the injunction will last until the completion of the case. In Williamson County, the injunction is valid until midnight, uh, October 5th, unless the court extends the order. Tennessee Attorney General Bill Slater is appealing this decision, stating that these orders have impeded the governor's executive authority during an emergency to direct the state's public health response. I guess, but that state of emergency that we've been living under endlessly uh, was originally meant for like tornadoes and floods. We don't have a state of emergency right now. We collected enough information to know what to do with this situation probably a year to 14 months ago. So, I don't know. I like separation of powers. It's something you learn in Tennessee civics classes. I think we need to do a civics class up at the legislature and with the governor so they can figure that stuff out. Pardon me. <coughs> oh, God. Here we go. Next story. New polling on Biden's federal mandate shows majority of Americans think non-compliant workers should not lose their job. New polling on President Joe Biden's federal vaccine mandate shows the majority of Americans do not think unvaccinated workers should lose their job. 65% of surveyed voters do not believe Americans should lose their job if they object to taking the COVID-19 vaccine. The poll also found 22% believe that those who refuse the mandate should lose their job, while 12.8% aren't sure. And you know what is not here that I wish Jason had included, but basically it's kind of like this. 85% of Republicans think that it shouldn't happen. Uh, and then <clears throat> there's maybe like 9% that do. I think all 9% uh, of those Republicans that think people should lose their job are probably, at least half of them are in the state Senate, uh, I believe. And I, I don't know, McNally may be in that group too, given his actions. Um, it's been, been quite odd to watch. Uh, and of course, liberals even, you would think it would be a much bigger number but only about, I think when I looked at the, at the graph and we published this uh, on our Facebook page, you can scroll down and see it, it wasn't really even that many Democrats. It, it wasn't that many. And uh, so there's still a little bit of freedom left even on the left, but not much. All right, guys, so that's the 10 con Big 7. Big story is obviously, and they've changed the way that I interact with this, and I do not like it because it's hard to read the comment sections, uh, and it's hard to see my video, but... The big news really is that we've got a special session and that Cameron Sexton has stood up for us, Janice Bowling has stood up for us, Mark Pody, uh, Terry Lynn Weaver. Uh, we've got some real fighters out there that have been vocal for their constituents. And for that, we should be eternally grateful uh, that we have a few fighters up there. And in 2022, uh, we need to be focused on Republican primaries so that we can make sure that we have some more people up there that are actually advocating for us 
Uh, so finally, do go to TennesseeConservativeNews.com, sign up for our e-newsletter. Uh, we do send out text alerts occasionally, although they are infrequent, uh, because you hear about constantly people being canceled on social media. So it's very important that we have the ability to directly communicate with you about stories that you need to know about in Tennessee. I've gone a little long. Uh, it's been a rough week, guys. Uh, it's been a roller coaster, and keeping up with this stuff is is stressful. And you're in constant and continual conflict when you're fighting evil, uh, when you're fighting for freedom, when other people are fighting for socialism and control. Uh, and you know what? I, I think it was something very interesting. Uh, when I went to that event last weekend, they're all running together uh, with Dennis Prager and Dennis Metaxas, or Dennis Prager and uh, Eric Metaxas, and he said, you know, God doesn't call on us to win. He really doesn't. God does not call on us to win the fight, but he does call on us to fight. Not everybody in the Bible won. Lots of people lost. And uh, our job as the, as, the, as the apostles, as the prophets of old, is to, to, to call out evil when we see it, to fight for it, and to stand up uh, against it. And we've got a lot of soft tyranny uh, out there. Uh, that, that really is, is masquerading um, as soft tyranny, but it's really big tyranny hoping to come. And it is my opinion that if we do the right thing and if we stand up early and often, uh, that we can have a freer Tennessee. And I appreciate all of you who help us. So if you watch this way down the road, leave it, uh, your comments. Let us know what you think about these subjects. And also tell us where you're listening from. I'm Brandon Lewis with TenCon Big 7. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm signing off. Love you guys. Have a great weekend.